In my recent video I walked through how to set up a Jellyfin private media server on a Ugreen NAS. However, if you intend to watch your movies and TV shows away from your home, there are some additional steps to make that possible. In this video I explain how to set up remote access so you can watch your movies and TV shows remotely using Tailscale VPN. To access your media remotely, some setup is necessary to allow your Jellyfin application to establish a connection with your NAS. In my case, I want to be able to watch movies and TV shows via my mobile phone when I'm traveling. Jellyfin, a free open source platform, differs from Plex in its approach to remote streaming. Unlike Plex, which charges users to utilize its servers for internet streaming, Jellyfin lacks the centralized infrastructure provided by competitors. This means Jellyfin users need to find their own methods to serve their media content across the internet to their devices. For Jellyfin, you'll need to replace the service supplied by Plex. This can be achieved by self-hosting and creating your own internet server, but it's a complex task for non-experts. Setting up your own server, either in your home or via the cloud, requires expertise and investment in the necessary software and equipment. The project is really reserved for enthusiasts. The other option is to use a third-party solution to enable you to connect your NAS from anywhere. For the average Jellyfin user, it will probably be easier to use a service to route your content across the internet. To do this, you'll need to use a virtual private network, more commonly referred to as a VPN. In very basic terms, a VPN is a private communication connection between two or more devices over a public network, most commonly the internet at large. It's crucial to understand that utilizing a VPN establishes a private connection for Jellyfin. This is a different setup to the Jellyfin documentation for remote access, so hopefully you won't be as confused as I was when I first started making this video. One way to help contextualize a VPN for newcomers is using an analogy based on driving a car. A VPN would be the equivalent of having exclusive access to a road that gets you to your destination. While you can use other roads to complete your journey, your private road is only accessible to you. No one else can use your private road unless you give them permission. A VPN service facilitates the private connection either for free or for a fee. You're investing either time or money to utilize a VPN company's expertise and their software. There are two different types of VPN service. The first are fully managed paid services where the company is responsible for the maintenance of your VPN service for you. The second type are self-hosted VPNs with free features, where you will manage most of the configuration and maintenance yourself. However, some VPN companies that offer a free VPN also offer premium services too. Without complicating this video too much, VPNs can use different protocols or a set of rules that determine the format of the data sent between the connected devices. This can be an important consideration for choosing the right VPN and how compatible that VPN is with any public network. Some users have reported that OpenVPN is sometimes blocked by public access points, which would affect users in a coffee shop or an airport, for example. Another issue with OpenVPN is that updates to the service have been known to break previously established connections and requires setting them up again. After reviewing the various compatible VPNs for Jellyfin and some comments on my previous video, I decided to experiment and create a walkthrough using Tailscale. Tailscale is actually a software layer integrated and built on top of WireGuard, a free open sourced VPN. For users unfamiliar with networking, Tailscale does a lot of the hard work for you compared to attempting to configure WireGuard for yourself. While it's feasible to configure WireGuard with Jellyfin, Tailscale automates several complex steps. This reduces the amount of additional time and expertise required just simply to get your Jellyfin content streaming remotely. To remotely access your Jellyfin media libraries via Tailscale, you'll need to install the Tailscale application on your NAS and all the devices you will use to watch Jellyfin content. The first step is to sign up for a Tailscale account by visiting tailscale.com. At the top right, click the Get Started button. You'll be asked to create your login credentials using your preferred method. Tailscale is free for private use up to a certain number of devices. You can complete the short tutorial or choose to skip it. The next step is to download the Tailscale client onto your computer. This will be how you manage your VPN connections to your NAS and playback devices. 
Next, you'll be connecting your NAS running your Jellyfin server to Tailscale so it can connect to your remote playback devices. If you've watched my other videos, you'll already be familiar with Docker on your Ugreen NAS. I recommend watching those videos first. Docker is a program that enables you to manage different applications on your Ugreen NAS. In very simple terms, think of Docker like an app with its own app store of different programs you can install called containers. Containers are self-contained programs that perform a specific task. Once you've installed Docker, the next step will be creating your Tailscale container on your NAS by composing it. There isn't an official Tailscale image in Docker at this time of creating the video, so this step is a bit different to setting up the Jellyfin container where an image was required first. Open Docker on your NAS using UGOS on the web or the desktop app. Click on Projects, then click on Create. Give the container a name, Tailscale is fine. Use the Compose settings created by Ugreen, which you can find in the description below of this video, and simply copy and paste with a minor change. My recommendation is to use Notepad to copy and paste the text and make edits. Paste the composed text from Notepad into the Compose Configuration dialog. To enable Tailscale to securely identify and connect with your Jellyfin container on your NAS, you'll need to create a unique auth key within the Tailscale client. This key serves as the unique identifier that links your NAS to your Tailscale account. Go to the Tailscale web interface and go to Settings. Then navigate to Keys under Personal Settings. Next, click on Generate Auth Key and then enable Reusable by toggling the option on. Now click Generate Key. Then copy the key and click Done. You will then paste the key into the container composed text in the designated line that starts TS Auth Key after the equal sign. Now click Deploy. Once set up, you can verify the connection by using your Tailscale client and reviewing machines. Your NAS will be listed here with a green icon. Tailscale now attributes a unique Tailscale IP address to your NAS that you'll use for remote streaming. This is different to your NAS's regular IP address, which is specific to Tailscale. You will need the Tailscale IP address for the next step to connect your remote playback devices. The next step is to download and log into the Tailscale app on your mobile device. Once complete, you will also need to turn on the Tailscale connection every time you want to stream content using Jellyfin. When not streaming your content, you can turn off Tailscale. To access your Jellyfin server, you'll need your Jellyfin container port number, which by default is 8096. While the IP address can be considered the address of your online device, the port number is probably best described as the door number, although that's oversimplifying it for the purposes of this video. It's worth noting that since my last video, there's an extra step to set up remote access. You will need to edit your Jellyfin container to enable access to the default Jellyfin port number. To do this, stop your Jellyfin container and then choose Edit. Scroll down to Network Configuration and Network Mode, choose Host rather than Bridge Mode. This will enable Jellyfin to see the container port outside of your home network. Without the port number, you can't access your Jellyfin container. With your Tailscale VPN set up, you will need to use the new IP address and your container port number to log into your mobile app. On the first setup, you'll be required to use your Jellyfin credentials or Quick Connect to log in too. After that, you're all done. Thank you for watching, and as always, it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.